Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of an extremely distant galaxy. Although in this case it's not just any galaxy, it's what's known as a quasar. And what the scientists seem to have discovered is essentially the most distant quasar ever found, with some of the most unusual features and also what seems to be a ridiculously powerful and a ridiculously massive black hole in the middle. And a lot of these features are somewhat difficult to explain. So let's talk a little bit more about this study and the discovery, and also find out why this discovery is actually a little bit strange. First of all, because this object is so extremely far away, this is basically what the scientists saw. It was only a size of a few pixels, even though this picture was taken with one of the most powerful telescopes on the planet, the ALMA telescope in Chile. But because it's so distant, yet because it's so bright, it means that this is an extremely powerful object. As a matter of fact, it seems to be the most powerful and one of the brightest, if not the brightest, quasars ever found. But how far is far? Well, with the redshift of 7.642, we can estimate the distance to this quasar at roughly around 29 to maybe 30 billion light years away from us. And the age of the light here was around 13.03 billion years old. So basically this is one of the farthest objects we've ever discovered. It's not the farthest galaxy, that record goes to another galaxy known as GNZ11, but it is the farthest quasar we've ever discovered. And that makes it somewhat interesting because quasars, by their nature, are very different from anything we have in the vicinity. They also have a lot of very unusual properties, but most importantly, they all contain what's known as an AGN or active galactic nucleus which is essentially the very massive black hole in the center that's responsible for producing a ridiculous amount of radiation and a ridiculous amount of power. And all of this usually shuts down the galaxy itself. It normally stops the production of different stars in a galaxy. At the same time, all of the light coming out of this quasar is easily visible from anywhere in the universe as long as the jets are aligned toward us or slightly toward us. And this is exactly what's happening here. These very powerful astrophysical jets coming from the center of the quasar are sort of shining in our faces, and that's why we're able to see this object. But unlike all of the other quasars, this one seems to be extremely powerful, more powerful than anything else we've seen so far, with the age of the quasar itself setting a new record, 13.03 billion years. But the record doesn't end here, because even the black hole here seems to be ridiculously large. The mass of this object is about 1.6 billion masses of the Sun, which is nearly 400 times more massive than the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. Now that's not the most massive black hole we've ever discovered, but considering the age of this object, it's definitely the most massive young black hole we've discovered. We've never seen a black hole so massive at such a young age. Here the black hole cannot be older than 670 million years, and that only means that it must have formed extremely quickly. And so its age, its total mass, and its ability to produce so much energy currently doesn't really have a very good explanation. Nobody ever expected to find such a massive and powerful object in the early universe. But here, let's also take a quick look at the total age of the universe just to see why this is actually kind of exciting and kind of unusual. And so if the universe today kind of looks like this, this is the present day universe, with all of the galaxies and all of the interactions we're seeing in the nearby space, if you were to go back in time approximately 13 billion years, you would find yourself in a completely different type of an environment. And I think this simulation from Stanford University does a pretty good job at helping us visualize all of this. The universe back then was still reionizing. In other words, in simple terms, it was becoming transparent. It was becoming what it is today. Back then the universe was extremely foggy. It was practically impossible to see through anything. And especially right here in the first few hundred million years of the existence of the universe, everything here was extremely difficult to see. It was the so-called Dark Ages. And that's because back then the hydrogen gas was actually neutral, meaning that it didn't have any charge and it was just atomic hydrogen that often is not really transparent. And because of this hydrogen fog, it's extremely difficult for us to find early galaxies and early stars. They're invisible to us. But as time went on and as the universe got older and older, around 215 million years after the creation of the universe, we expect to find first black holes and first accretion disks. In other words, that's when probably the first quasars started to appear. But back then they were much smaller, they weren't really that powerful, and it's probably almost impossible for us to see them. 
especially because the hydrogen gas was still kind of hiding a lot of this light. But after about a billion years, all of this reionization was complete and all of the galaxies and all of the quasars became much easier to find and as long as they were bright enough, we would probably see them with a powerful telescope. And that's essentially the Dark Ages and the reionization period. But what's interesting about this quasar is that it appeared somewhere in the middle. Basically, when the universe was still reionizing and when things were not transparent yet, but also when we don't really expect to find these extremely massive black holes. At least if we look at all of the theories of black hole formations. So, for example, today we believe that there are possibly two or maybe three ways black holes can form. One way they can form is by accreting a lot of matter and essentially slowly sucking in a huge amount of mass, huge amount of gas coming from inside the galaxy and slowly growing that way. Another way we think black holes or massive black holes can form is through a sudden collapse of a relatively dense star cluster, such as a global cluster that suddenly collapses into a single object. Now, we don't really know if that actually happens, but that's one of the possible ideas behind the formation of these massive black holes. But here, even in the best case scenario, if a really huge cluster collapses into this black hole, or if it keeps accreting all of this mass over and over for these millions of years, it's still not actually going to reach the size and the mass that was detected uh, from this particular black hole. So something here doesn't add up, because it seems that it was already really, really massive, probably as massive as about 10,000 masses of the sun, as early as the first black hole started to form. And so it seems that it was already born large, it was already born massive. And so the only feasible explanation here is gas a huge amount of gas that suddenly accreted and formed this really massive black hole all at once and kept making it larger and larger for millions of years. But there's no actual proof of any of this and that's just an assumption that the scientists made based on basically any other theory not working. But that's not the only interesting feature about this quasar. It also seems to produce a lot of stars. Now that kind of makes sense because it's an early galaxy, but we know that quasars normally don't really produce a lot of stars or any stars at all. As a matter of fact, quasars normally shut down the star production. But in this case, it seems to be producing at least 200 masses of the sun per year, which is actually quite a lot. Yet at the same time, the black hole in the center also uses a lot of this mass, approximately 25 masses of the sun per year, to essentially produce all of this energy and all of these powerful relativistic jets that we can then see from planet Earth. So the black hole itself uses around 25 masses of the sun per year to emit all of this ridiculous amount of energy and to produce extremely strong galactic winds. And the winds here are super strong. The actual speed is estimated at around 20% the speed of light. That means that a lot of this gas is actually going to get displaced from the galaxy, the process often referred to as quenching. And during this quenching, all of the star production will suddenly cease and the galaxy will become silent, eventually turning into what we would call a dead galaxy. But that will probably take millions of years. For now, what we're seeing is an extremely powerful black hole, very fast growing black hole as well, that produces some of the brightest light in the universe and that for now at least seems to be the farthest quasar we've ever found. The most distant active galactic nucleus. And that makes this a pretty exciting discovery. But because it's so far away, it's also extremely difficult to know anything else about it. With just a few pixels for us to study here, we're not going to be able to see much more detail until some extremely large telescopes come out in the future. And in this case, we would probably need some sort of an Earth-sized telescope, which the scientists are definitely working on. But anyway, until we actually learn more about this quasar, or until we discover something else unusual somewhere out there in a distant universe, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon, or by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt, which actually helps the channel quite a lot. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.